In Georgia, Republican Governor Brian Kemp signs a bill creating an oversight commission with the power to remove local prosecutors and district attorneys from their jobs. Kemp says the measure would create an oversight mechanism to ensure accountability in upholding Constitution and statutory duties. The commission will consist of eight members. Five will be responsible for investigating um, any alleged conduct constituting grounds for discipline. The other three will be for adjudicating an adjudicating arm that issues out the punishment. Critics say this timing is really suspicious, especially with Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis seriously weighing charges in connect connection with former President Donald Trump's actions in Georgia after the 2020 election. Democrats are concerned the commissioners will misuse their authority to punish or remove local prosecutors unnecessarily. Let's go to my panel, who joins us today. Matt Manning. Civil rights attorney joining us from, from Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, we have, of course, Michael M. Hotep, host of the African History Network show. Of course, he is joining us uh, from Detroit. And Candace Kelly, she joins us right now, legal analyst uh, from New Jersey. Glad to have all three of you here. So let's, let's get right into this here. So when you look at Jackson, what's happening in Mississippi, you look at Georgia, you look at Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida going after um, prosecutors he doesn't like. Uh, Candace, this is absolutely Republicans using their power to silence progressives, using their power to exert control over black elected officials, the black population. Uh, it is an absolute abuse of authority uh, by the GOP in numerous places around this country, Georgia, Texas, Florida, Mississippi, you name it. Roland, you're absolutely right. And in fact, we have a, 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 a violation of power uh, and authority from people who've already spoken. In other words, we have people who've already voted the GAs into office. We have people who've already voted for a certain system in Jackson not to be separated and have their equal equal uh, rights violations, equal rights be violated. So here you have people who've already voted and heard their voices heard, and those voices are being taken away, which is why the NAACP is filing that lawsuit in Jackson. And one thing that we have to remember about the power that is being exerted by the Republicans in Georgia is that they're doing this, as you said, in preparation for the charges that are coming down on Donald Trump. This is something that that DEA has been preparing for for years. And she's not just preparing for these phone calls. She's preparing for the, the, uh, the fake electors. Uh, she has been doing this for years. She has trumped up her, 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 her security. She is death threat. She is all over white, white supremacist websites. This is someone who is going for the gusto. They know she is coming and they're using the power and actually legal power so far because it has not been protested. They are trying to go through a route that they know Trump has already laid down. He did this already in terms of uh, uh, voting in and making sure that the federal courts were built up with everyone who is a Republican. He's doing the same thing, and so are his political allies, by saying we're going to use the system and the power that we have to work in our favor. But we know that that DA in Georgia is not going anywhere, and that is what they most fear down there in Georgia. Um Matt, the, the point that Candace makes is a crucial one. These are democratically elected people. The voters decided who they want to represent them based upon what they said as they were running. And so here you have Republicans who are saying, ah, damn that, we don't care what the voters decided, we are going to be the judge and jury to determine whether they're doing their job. You are so spot on, Roland. And what's especially interesting with this timing is last week, I literally got appointed to represent our local DA in a removal lawsuit where they're they're lobbying the same kinds of accusations against him. Uh, and I used to manage that office under him. And I was appointed by my local county to defend the lawsuit to remove him from office. 
And politically, that exact conversation is happening here in Corpus Christi as it is across the country. Uh, this is a political attack on him, and it's political attack on anyone in, who's been duly elected, especially multiple times. The DA here, uh, Kim Gardner in St. Louis, across the country, these people have won multiple times and in landslides. And irrespective of that, you see Republicans directly attacking those offices, and they're doing so with the dog whistles that they know will be effective. Crime, uh, failure to do their duties, all of those things. And what's especially problematic about that is, at least in Texas and presumably everywhere else, these offices have great latitude, great discretion to do their jobs. Their job is to seek justice, not convictions. So the idea that somebody would be removed because somebody Monday morning quarterbacking, you know, at the state house thinks that they're not getting enough convictions or are too lenient is not how the system works. And I think Candace hit the nail on the head with all of her comments. But one thing I would add to that is that I think that we're really in a constitutional crisis because what you see is a separation of powers issue where the legislatures across the country are deciding that duly elected uh, public officials should not be able to do their job in a way that they disagree irrespective of if it's within the bounds of the law and the discretion that they're given. So this is a huge issue, and this is a testament to what we talk about on this show every week, the idea that the Republicans are playing chess, not checkers, and they're looking at every way to exert power, particularly in the local um, offices where that has the greatest meaningful effect on people's lives. What happens at the school board affects your child's curriculum. What happens with your DA affects you know, the policies and whether those policies are rooted towards justice and rehabilitation or rooted towards deterrence and retribution. All of these things on the local level are very important, and that's why the Republicans have a full-on onslaught across the country against duly elected people uh, using the dog whistles and the, the fake rhetoric that we see we know is not true, right? Because the reality is the law gives them this discretion. But if you know your base is not listening to that and your base is energized by the anger, then it's easy to foment that kind of uh, you know support that we're seeing in these state houses in Texas and Mississippi, Florida, and so on. But Michael, I'll expand this. Uh, Matt brought it up in terms of how Republicans are targeting Kim Gardner, uh, the circuit attorney there in St. Louis. They also are trying to take over the St. Louis Police Department, no different mm -hmm. than then the governor controlling the Kansas City Police Department. For all of these people who love talking about uh, Big Brother, getting rid of big government and local control, it's amazing how they want to meddle in local affairs of locally elected individuals. Yes, Roland, but it, it's it's local affairs when it comes to largely African-American elected officials, when it comes to uh, African-American ran and uh, police departments. If we look at, uh, I think it's important to note that both of these states are in the South. Both are former Confederate states also. OK, I, I, I think it's important to note that Mississippi and Georgia with Mississippi. When I first heard this story in Mississippi, when the um, story came out April 23rd and Mississippi Today uh, reported on it. And I said, oh, I said, OK, Governor Tate Reeves, it looks like uh, they are doing this so they can have more control over police and African-Americans. But as I got deeper into the story, uh, the Capital Complex Improvement District is largely the white, more fluent area of Jackson, Mississippi. The no, state no, 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 not largely. Nearly mm -hmm. all whites in Jackson live in the complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what this sounds like is the white governor, Tate Reeves, through the state legislature, this passed the House and the, and the state House and Senate, they're taking power away from uh, Jackson, Mississippi, led by Chokwe, Chokwe Lumumba, uh, African-American man, and the, the state government is going to have more control over, it sounds like, protecting white people in Jackson, Mississippi. When you look at Georgia, uh, Brian Kemp, and I have to take it here, I told African Americans in Georgia back in 2018 when Stacey Abrams was running, that Stacey Abrams' policies were better for African Americans. So many of them were, were, said, oh, Stacey Abrams doesn't have a black agenda. I said, Brian... Brian Kemp has a black agenda. He has an anti-black agenda, okay? Hmm. And the anti-black agenda is worse than, quote, unquote, not having a black agenda. But you look at this here, this, it appears that this is designed to take away power for someone like a, um, a, a, a Fannie Lewis, who is 
uh, going to right. prosecute Donald Trump. Well, okay? well, 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 again, again, what, what, what we're looking at here is very simple, and that is Republicans not liking any policy or a leader that they don't like. What this is about mm -hmm. is them saying to the voters, the hell with who you elected. We don't care who you chose. We are going to determine how they do their job. Harris, when, when, the, when, the, when, when the folks in Texas want to control, again, to order a new election, and, and you pass a law that only applies to one of the 254 <laughs> counties in all of Texas. One, Harris Biggest. County. Again, that is a, that's targeting democratically elected folk who happen to be largely Democrats in Texas. That's how they're using their power. And so I'm going to say it again. A lot of y'all can, a lot of y'all and some of the people who y'all know, and some of your family members and friends, y'all can listen to these yahoos, mm. these so-called new black media people, folks who don't know jack about politics. Y'all can listen to them talk all day. Y'all can listen to them talk about not voting. Y'all can listen to them to try to call somebody a shield, whatever you want to call them. What the Republican, listen to me very clearly, because those yahoos are not going to tell you what I'm about to tell you. The Republican Party is absolutely focused on limiting and eliminating black voices. Mm -hmm. It's fundamentally clear what they are trying to do. When you see the attack on Soros-funded DAs, they do not want to see the sister in Florida who we had on the other day. They did, they did not want to see Marilyn Mosby. They don't want to see Alvin Bragg. They don't want to see Fannie Willis. They, don't, they can't stand the white guy Larry Krasner in Philadelphia. They don't like mm. any, they hate Kim Gardner. They don't like mm. anybody. They hate uh, the white progressive DA in Los Angeles. They led, what I'm trying to get y'all to understand is if you sitting your ass on the sidelines, but you talking about how you want certain policies, how you gonna get them? Mm -hmm. How are you going to get the policies you claim you want if the very folk who are put in office to give you the policies you want are stopped? When you have Aramis, when you had Aramis Ayala, elected state prosecutor in Florida, no, I am not going to prosecute death penalty cases. Matt knows this. Any lawyer knows, Candace knows this. The district attorney has the prerogative Mm -hmm. to determine That's right. what direction they're going to go in. This, this Brian Kemp law, the DA, let me be real clear to everybody listening and watching, the district attorney does not have to pursue death, the death penalty in cases. They have an option. They don't have to pursue. That's why you have first degree murder, second degree murder, third degree murder, manslaughter one, manslaughter two. But I mean, you have different variations of murder. It's their judgment. What Republicans are saying is, we don't like your judgment. We mm -hmm. are going to judge and decide what you should do. So therefore, if the people work their butts off, to go to the polls, to put Fannie Willis in, to put Kim Fox in. Oh, we're going to remove them. And we don't really care what you think. We're going to remove them. DeSantis removed a white prosecutor in Florida. Andrew, was it Andrew Weber? I forgot his last name. I think so. He's going after the sister. Mm -hmm. Monique. He's going, y'all, this is real. And so when you sit out, the gubernatorial race, that's how the Ron DeSantis is win. Mm. When you sit out the gubernatorial race in Georgia, that's how Brian Kemp wins. 
when 75 percent of young voters 18 to 30 in Texas don't vote, that's how Greg Abbott gets reelected. And so if you're sitting here now going, well, this is a damn shame. What did you do about it? Mm -hmm. What did you do about the state Supreme Court in North Carolina? Folks, we're laying these things out to you because you need to understand the game plan that they are executing is completely focused on limiting and eliminating black representation unless you are a black Republican. Y'all better recognize, because they're not stopping. They're going full steam ahead. And we had better respond accordingly. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 